Now this late presentation coming from one of video cards inside sources at Intel is revealing a ton of details about Intel's upcoming processor family called Rocket Lake which apparently seems to be a new architecture and if that is the case that would be Intel's first new architecture in a very 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 long time. Now many people are confused and I gotta be honest here guys I am pretty lost too but it seems like Intel is planning to launch yet another processor processor family for desktop by the end of the year and we believe that they're planning on launching Rocket Lake around the same time frame as uh, AMD's upcoming 40 and Ryzen. Can Rocket Lake uh, rocket and spark Intel back to success? Can Rocket Lake possibly beat 40 and Ryzen? Help me out here guys let me know what you think in the comment section down below. In today's video we're going to cover everything you need to know about Intel's upcoming processor family for desktop. Hey what is up guys welcome to Arbin Hardware my my name is Robin, I'm your Swedish host and friend with bad posture and poor accent. Now Skylake has been a part of Intel's processors for almost 5 years now and the reason why it has survived for such a long time is mainly because of the difficulty Intel's been having shrinking the production down to 10 nanometer, which has simply forced Intel to reuse Skylake for several generations year after year after year. I see a lot of people asking why not give up on Skylake in 40 nanometer? and it is a little bit more complicated than that because Intel didn't really have a choice. The yum from 14 down to 10 turned out to be a bit more complex than what Intel anticipated. And that is mainly the reason why Intel's been stuck on 14 nanometer. Anyways, after many years of waiting, it is finally time for a change here in this matter and towards the end of 2019 information started to circulate that Intel's planned processor family called Rocket Lake was in fact the variant of Tiger Lake. Now Tiger Lake if you don't know is manufactured on 10 nanometer and will be introduced for laptop later this year and this is Intel's 12th gen processors for laptops. Anyway it turns out that Tiger Lake uses the Willow Cove architecture and according to leaked information this would be the case with Rocket Lake as well but unfortunately Unfortunately, it seems like Rocket Lake will be stuck on 40 nanometer. But to be fair, it is not Sky Lake anymore. So yeah, that's at least something to celebrate. At least, I think. Now, the reason why Intel would take on the Willow Cove architecture to 40 nanometer is because the new old design has better potential to reach higher clock frequencies. Something that is important for desktop and the enthusiast market. And this includes gaming, of course. Now, the disadvantage of this is that the technology Technology. 40 nanometer is less transistor dense and the energy efficiency on 40 nanometer is worse so we don't know yet but this ultimately could mean that Rocket Lake is going to be yet another toasty processor family and thus would require a beefy cooler in order to fully take advantage of this new CPU lineup. Anyway Video Cards has published an international presentation for Rocket Lake S where the S at the end reveals that the processors are for desktop. Now the picture shows the uh, entire platform and it covers everything from new features for the processors itself to the new 500 series chipset. And it turns out Rocket Lake is getting a new core design and this is strengthening uh, previous information that Intel is in fact stepping away from Skylake for enthusiasts. It is a bit complicated but try and follow me here. Uh, the Willow Core architecture is a further development of Sonicov which should guarantee significant performance increase as the latter should have an average average of 18% better IPC over Skylake. The core count for upcoming Rocket Lake is still unknown but earlier rumors suggest up to 8 or even 10 cores in total and most likely we are gonna see 10 cores here for the upcoming flagship Core i9 which means that we're possibly looking at an identical core count as for the upcoming Comet Lake. Now in case you are a bit out of the loop and you're wondering what the heck this guy is talking about, what is Comet Lake? Well I've actually linked up a video down below that covers everything you need to know about Intel's soon to launch CPUs for desktop. But let's jump back to Rocket Lake. It turns out that the processors also get an iGPU or an integrated graphics and this one will be based on the brand new and exciting C architecture or the XE architecture which according to previous reports gets a total of 32 CUs instead of 96 CUs that is available on Tiger Lake on 10 nanometers. And if we were to believe the rumors the graphics part will not be something 
with performance in focus, so you're probably not gonna be able to game on it, and instead it will simply just be there to offer an alternative way to show your cursor on screen in those scenarios where you don't have a dedicated graphics card. I mentioned that the transition to this new architecture is exciting, and it turns out that this new Intel graphics brings a number of new features such as HDMI 2.0B, DisplayPort 1.4A, and improved video decoding support. Another new welcome feature in the processor itself is the integrated PCIe Express 4.0 support. This is something that AMD introduced with 3rd gen Ryzen for about a year ago now, and at the same time the bandwidth uh, per PCIe lane is now being doubled, and Intel now increases the number of lanes from 16 to 20, where the extra 4 are intended for an M.2 connection, and this would mean that Intel now finally matches AMD, at least when it comes to the PCIe standard. Everything is whether not bells and whistles, the chipset will still remain on PCI Express 3.0, and the number of lanes will stay on 24 in total, similar to today's 300 series and the upcoming 400 series released for Comet Lake. We do however get a few new features, and this includes support for uh, DisplayPort 4, and this is up to 40 gigabits per second, and we also get support for USB 3.2 Gen 2, with a transfer rate up to 20 gigabits per second. Now, as for the socket, we still aren't 100% sure uh, which socket Intel is planning on using here. A previous report have indicated that Rocket Lake will be compatible with LGA 1200, which will be introduced with Comet Lake this spring. Now, if that is the case, uh, well, that could mean that the upcoming motherboards for Comet Lake could get support for PCI Express 4.0. In terms of release date, Intel is expecting to launch Rocket Lake by the end of Q4, around the same time frame as AMD rolls out for the Ryzen. Now, before all of this, the company will also release Comet Lake, which takes 10 cores to the wide mass, and Comet Lake is hopefully going to be the final and the last glimpse of the soon-to-retire Skylake architecture, we hope at least. Now, WCCF Tech is reporting that while we do not have any ideas of what kind of IPC we can expect uh, going from Comet Lake S to Rocket Lake S, all evidence points to this being a revolutionary jump as opposite to an evolutionary one. In fact, this leak would actually make gamers and enthusiasts wait for the arrival of the Rocket Lake and skip Comet Lake entirely because of the massive opportunity cost this platform will leave them with, and I definitely agree on that. Knowing that Rocket Lake is somewhat around the corner makes Comet Lake look pretty old and ugly. Honestly, I don't know what's going on right now. I simply cannot find any reasons why Comet Lake wouldn't be a major flop. I just don't see the reason why Comet Lake should even exist to be honest. And to be honest, I'm not very excited for any of these processors at all, but I would love to hear what you think about this. As for pricing as well as performance, apart from the 18% IPC gain, there are literally no leaks around this yet, and so I, I guess we're gonna have to wait a bit for that. But as always, I am 100% committed to share more details as we get to learn more, so definitely subscribe so that you don't miss out. I wanna thank you so much for sticking around this long and watch of these two videos and i will see you guys in the next one